Welcome to our uh, seminar. Uh, today we are very happy to have uh, Hao Shen from Wisconsin and he will tell us about stochastic Ricci flow. Welcome, Hao. Okay, uh, thank you very much for the invitation. Uh, so I think I didn't show up um, very often to this uh, to the seminar, but I did watch a lot of uh, talks on YouTube and uh, were very, very nice and I really appreciate the organizer to put this together. Um, <clears throat> Yeah, so the, the key message of this talk is uh, <clears throat> we introduce the stochastic version of the Ricci flow, which is a stochastic partial differential, which is stochastic partial differential equation. And uh, this equation has, uh, has uh, the Liouville quantum uh, field theory as, uh, as an environment measure. And uh, we're going to use the directly form theory to construct a weak solution to give a meaning to this uh, stochastic Ricci flow. <clears throat> also, um, you know, the result seems to be the first step um, to a kind of a dynamical approach to, uh, to the real quantum gravity. So there are still many questions and uh, uh, possible directions or open problems. And this is also part of this, uh, part of the purpose of this talk. Um, <clears throat> For instance, you know, in, in the end of in the end of talk, I'm going to list, uh, you know, give you a list of such uh, questions. For instance, uh, uh, so far we only construct a weak solution. Uh, one open question is how to obtain uh, a strong solution, and also uh, the sort of you know scaling limit kind of question. You know, for other stochastic PDEs, such as uh, KBZ, I mean, kada paris zhang equation. Um, it's now understood that uh, uh, many discrete dynamics like a, like, like a particle systems and so on uh, converge to the, to the solution of KBZ equation. So you may also ask such questions for uh, stochastic Ricci flow. Um, <clears throat> and uh, and uh, uh, also I'm also interested in the, uh, to, to see the connection between this uh, dynamic uh, approach and uh, and the other approaches of, uh, of uh, random geometry. <clears throat> of course, uh, of course, uh, Julian has more in insight on this. But uh, uh, okay, so so what's the motivation? Uh, the first motivation is uh, is just to find a random perturbation of the Ricci flow, at least in two dimension. Of course, this uh, this kind of randomness, you know, the, the noise we want to add to the Ricci flow. Uh, should not be some arbitrary noise. Uh, it should be, you know, some sort of noise which has uh, has intrinsic or geometric meaning. I'll explain this later. Uh, another motivation is uh, is a quantum gravity. So in the uh, Polyakov path integral, you know, if you assume that the matter field is uh, is a, a free bosonic field. Then you can integrate out the, the, the matter field and get this uh, this uh, determinant of uh, Laplacian, where the Laplacian is uh, with respect to the to the metric on the on the Riemann surface. <clears throat> um, now, <clears throat> for the for the rest of the integral over all the metrics, you know, if the metric you know modulo the deformorphism and conformal transformations, then you get the Teichmüller space and uh, in order to uh, in order to integrate out the conformal part of this metric um, well Polyakov said if you do like a conformal change of your uh, your metric then uh, essentially you get this uh, Liouville quantum field theory so in other words <clears throat> if you you know if you think of the volume form for this uh, for this metric as you know a product of you know a diffeomorphism part and conformal part and the the, uh, the Will Peterson part of the you know Teich then the volume part uh, the the volume form of the conformal part is described by this uh, Liouville conformal field theory. So, <clears throat> um, so the motivation is to to uh, find a natural stochastic process. Associated to the uh, Liouville, con uh, Liouville quantum field theory. Uh, in other words, to, to find a stochastic quantization um, 
of this uh, this Liouville quantum field theory, um, you know, construct a process such that uh, this kind of measure is the invariant measure. <clears throat> so, <clears throat> so this okay. So at this point, actually, we can already ask uh, several questions, several open questions. Uh, for example. Uh, <clears throat> What if you don't integrate out this matter field, right? Suppose the matter field is not free boson, then uh, how do you define this uh, kind of dynamic, right? Maybe your dynamic should be coupled with a matter field or something. I think uh, one model you know, physical, phys physically interest is, uh, is that the, <coughs> uh, the matter field is, uh, is some sort of uh, nonlinear sigma model where you just replace this uh, uh, RD, the target space, right, by the by a d-dimensional manifold. So in that case, uh, this uh, uh, action for the for the matter field would be some sort of harmonic map. And uh, well, th this kind of uh, the, you know, the stochastic dynamic for that would be extremely hard to 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 construct to, to define. And uh, and in fact. Um, even if you pretend this is one dimension, right? It's just replace the Riemann surface by uh, by a loop, then this would be, you know, the, the stochastic dynamic would be, you know, a motion of random motion of a loop in a manifold, in a d-dimensional manifold. Um, and actually, recently there's a there's a work by you know Martin Heyer, Zambotti, uh, uh, Brunet, and Gabriel, and they, uh, they 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 obtained extremely strong result. On this uh, this dynamic of uh, random loops in manifold, and oh okay, I'll discuss this in the end of the talk. Um, <clears throat> so what is the Ricci flow? Um, so it says um, I'll only focus on two D Ricci flow in this talk. It says the time derivative of the remaining metric on the surface is equal to minus, and the two doesn't matter, uh, times the Ricci curvature. Of the of the metric. Okay, um, so so in general, on the on the manifold, if you uh, if you're given a, a metric, then the metric determines the Ricci curvature. So the Ricci curvature is a is sort of a second derivative of the metric, but it's kind of a nonlinear version of a second derivative. Actually, um, you know when I was given this talk. Um, in France, last time, uh, Scott Sheffield asked me to write down the formula of the Ricci curvature in terms of the metric. I didn't write that because this would be the formula. So, so this is a you know, well the Ricci curvature is two tensor, right? so it, it can be there's formula in terms of the the, the, the metric, but um, we 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 are uh, we are we're going to uh, we'll never use this. Um, but you can kind of see that the, um, in the formula, you have a, a second derivative of the metric, uh, but then multiplied by the metric. So this is something called a quasi-linear equation. And then there are you know, lower order derivatives and so on. Okay. Um, so this is a second order partial differential equation. And actually, <clears throat> In two dimension, the Ricci curvature is always equal to the Gauss curvature times the metric. So Kg is the Gauss curvature, um, and in the talk we'll you know always work with the Gauss curvature and never work with Ricci curvature. Okay, so if you now ignore the last term here, this is just the original Ricci flow. And maybe just get some uh, hands-on example, right? So it take this, the uh, if you start with a round sphere, then for the round sphere, the Gauss curvature is a positive constant. In that case, the right-hand side is negative. So, <clears throat> so the, the 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 metric uh, is going to decay. Right? Uh, in other words, the sphere is going to shrink. Okay, so there's a Modified right. So if you have this uh, second second term here, which is just a constant lambda times the metric, then this is called a modified Ricci flow. 
Um, <clears throat> okay, there's several reasons to, to have this term. Well, the first reason is you can somehow use this term to, 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 to normalize the flow, right? Suppose you don't want the, the sphere, the round sphere to shrink, then what you can do is to you know, choose this constant lambda to be the, uh, well, the negative of the average Gauss curvature. <clears throat> the, uh, well, the average Gauss curvature by uh, Gauss bonnet is, is a constant, right? So in that case, the, somehow the right-hand side of the equation is centered, right? Um, then you can, you can preserve the total area of this, uh, of this surface. <clears throat> um, another reason to have this term, well, actually in two dimension, the Ricci curvature and the metric are the only terms you can write down. So suppose you, right, suppose you ask for, you know, all the possible, you know, intrinsic two tensors, um, you know, at the most signal, the derivative in the metric, then, um, then essentially you only have the Ricci curvature and the, and the metric in the sense that, um, right, so the, so the Ricci curvature is intrinsic, it's, it's like intrinsic two tensor, because um, suppose you have an isometry to another manifold, right, so like a manifold with metric G1, another manifold with metric G2, they are you know, isometric, then the, the Ricci curvature must be the same, right? Um, right, so if, if you were to choose like, uh, if this lambda was a, was a, a function instead of, uh, instead, instead of a constant, then a function times the metric would not be intrinsic because if you are isometry, then that's the pullback of the function doesn't have to be the, the function, right? So, so, so you no know, constant times Ricci and constant times metric are the kind of only intrinsic object you can write down. Okay, <clears throat> so um, as I said, the, the Ricci curvature is the Gauss curvature times G. So you can also write this equation as, uh, uh, as uh, the scalar thing times the, the, the metric. What's interesting for the Ricci flow is uh, the Ricci flow can be written into like four or five different forms. You can write the Ricci flow in terms of the conformal factor or area form or curvature. So, so let's first look at the conformal factor. <clears throat> uh, let's fix the reference metric or background metric, which is called the G naught. Um, and we do a conformal change of G naught. So phi is called conformal factor. And uh, um, since the, since the time derivative of, of, of the G is equal to the scalar thing times G, then we know that the time derivative of this phi is just equal to this scalar, right? Uh, that's because that's how you take the derivative of the exponential function. And, uh, and we can also rewrite this uh, Gauss curvature for the metric G as, as this because, um, if two metrics are conformal, then we have such a relation, which says the Gauss curvature for this metric is equal to this whole thing where K naught is a Gauss curvature of the metric G zero and phi is this conformal factor. And this Laplacian naught is the Laplacian for the G naught. <clears throat> okay. So now we have an equation for the conformal factor, also has a Laplacian and curvature term lambda. Um, in particular, you see an important property of Ricci flow, which is the Ricci flow preserves the conformal class. This means if you start with uh, some metric, then uh, at any positive time t, the metric is conformal to the, to the metric you start with. <clears throat> Uh, this is why you can you can write the equation in terms of conformal factor. <clears throat> okay, we can also write the equation in terms of area form. So if G is conformal to G naught, then you can prove that the area form for G is uh, also equal to exponential to phi times area form of the G naught. So, <clears throat> so the transformation looks the same as the metric, right? So this is why the uh, the time derivative of the area form 
is equal to the scalar times error form. So this equation looks like looks like similar with the, the equation for the metric. And now we can also write the equation as well. Um, the scale the, the Gauss curvature you can you can just apply this uh, formula again um, and get this. So the area form uh, satisfy equation which has a kind of Laplacian term and curvature term and the lambda term. So this is again this is so a z a naught is the area form for g naught um, and uh, <clears throat> and there is a well there's still a Laplacian phi which is kind of annoying but we'll deal with that later. <clears throat> so for 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 this talk we'll just work with the the equation with for a conformal factor and for the area form because after quantization the essentially the conformal factor would you know would be like a, a sort of gaussian free field and the area form is sort of uh, gmc the gaussian multiplicative chaos geometers also like to work with uh, this equation in terms of gauss curvature because it's like a reaction diffusion equation but we'll never work with this equation okay <clears throat> so how is the uh, related with uh, with uh, with the Liouville? <clears throat> in Liouville action, there are also three terms: the Lap kind of Laplacian term, the curvature term, and this lambda term. So similar with uh, that equation of Ricci. <clears throat> and now, <clears throat> um, okay. By the way, maybe for some audience, uh, you you are more familiar with. Uh, uh, this way of writing the liberal action. So th this, you know, this is more like a geometer's way. This is a probabilist way, um, where you write the field as x, and then the the parameters in the action like a mu and gamma, right? So so the GMC here is e to the gamma x, but they just differ with my differ from my notation by a very simple change of variable. <clears throat> All right. Um, <clears throat> So, so this uh, Liouville action is a function on the infinite dimensional space of this conformal class. Okay, so this M is all the metrics which are conformal to the reference metric G naught. So this is a conformal class of G naught. And uh, <clears throat> right, so remember Everything here depends on this reference metric, right? So this A is, and this A is area form of G naught, and K is the curvature for G naught, and so on. So, um, so we can parametrize now. Now we are parametrizing the 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 conformal class using this uh, conformal factor phi. Actually. <clears throat> You know, maybe several weeks ago, uh, Steve Zeldich gave a talk, and he liked to parameterize this conformal class using the Kähler potential. So, in other words, he's using the Kähler gauge. I'm using the Wow gauge here, but it's equivalent. <clears throat> and uh, Steve, in his talk, also mentioned that um, on this uh, infinite dimensional space of a conformal class, you can define uh, several different metrics like Calabi metric, gradient Calabi and the Mabuchi. And here I'm taking the Calabi metric. <clears throat> it says, right, so the, so how do you define the Calabi metric on this infinite dimensional space, right? So basically you take two tangent vectors of this M. Since I parameterize the M using the conformal factor, a tangent vector is also a function, right? So tangent vector psi one, psi two, are also functions. They're just uh, you know a perturbation of phi, and uh, their scalar product at the tangent space um, at the metric G is defined as following. So it's just kind of L two integral of them over the surface, but with respect to so this important is with respect to the area form. Of G, so the metric really depends on the point, right? Depends on where the tangent plane is, <clears throat> and uh, this area form for G can be also written like e to the two phi times the area form of the reference metric. 
So you see how this depends on the phi. <clears throat> okay. Um, the Ricci flow is actually related with Liouville in the sense that the gradient flow of this Liouville action with respect to the Calabi metric is just the Ricci flow. Uh, you can you can kind of check this right. So you see if you take the gradient of this with respect to the Calabi metric, then you get this term. This means if you take any you know tangent vector right, um, then the scalar product of this with that tangent vector is equal to the directional derivative of this term in the direction of that tangent vector, right? Because um, if you take a scalar product of this with some tangent vector psi, say, then um, you're, because if the scalar product defined this way, so the e to the two phi cancel this e to the minus two phi, then you end up with a kind of a, the trivial kind of, you know, um, grad phi, grad psi, that kind of thing which is just the directional derivative of this thing in the direction of psi. The same for the other terms, okay? So the so last term is just lambda without this exponential because the exponential is used here. <clears throat> okay, so this is precisely the Ricci flow in terms of the conformal factor. Okay, so it's, this is not new. This is not, well, the, the fact that the Ricci flow is a gradient flow of Liouville is already observed by geometers. For, for instance, in that uh, famous paper by Osgood, Philip Sarnak, definitely, uh, definitely already mentioned that. Um, and also maybe mentioned, you know, in the original paper by Polyakov, um, he was doing something else. He was actually looking at the so-called the wheat, the wheat metric on the space of all the metric tensors G. But here we just fix this conformal class. So in some sense, maybe this is closer to this, uh, you know, David Distler uh, Kawai approach, but let's, let's avoid you know, too much physics here. <clears throat> okay, so, so uh, how do we add randomness, right? <clears throat> How do we quantize this? <clears throat> so recall that the, the Ricci flow is, uh, you know, the time derivative metric is equal to this uh, scalar thing, right? Gauss curvature plus constant times G. We want to add another kind of scalar valued random field, which is this Cassie G. <clears throat> this Cassie G, well, this sigma is just a real number. It's like the strength of the noise. And this uh, Cassi G is uh, the white noise, the space-time white noise, which is white with respect to the metric G. Okay, so let me explain what this is. So let's first recall <coughs> the white noise on the Euclidean space. It's defined as a, a mean zero Gaussian random field whose covariance is given by, is defined by eta isometry, right? So this C is kind of a distribution. And if you integrate against a test, smooth test function F and take the variance of this, it's given by the L2 of F. So in particular, if D is one, say, then uh, C is just the time derivative of the, of the Brownian motion, right? This, this is the usual eta isometry. <clears throat> so, so this is the Euclidean case. Now, if you have a metric on the surface, then we can generalize this in the following way. So, <clears throat> so the noise test against F, but now you integrate with, re with respect to the area form of G, right, of the metric G. And then the variance is equal to the L2 of F, but the L2 is defined using this area form of G. <clears throat> okay. So this is the Y noise with respect to the metric G, and this is intrinsic geometric object because if you have isometry between two manifolds, right, with, with, with the matrix G1, G2, then um, the kind of pullback of this uh, 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 this the Y noise using this uh, this isometry is equal in law with uh, with the other uh, Y noise. 
<coughs> okay. So we can also write that just this is our stochastic Ricci flow. And this moment is completely formal because it involves multiplication with a, with a distribution. Uh, we can also formally write down the equation for the conformal factor and area form. <clears throat> now, for the conformal factor, is just you know add a y noise in the end, and here you can prove that if uh, if a metric G is conformal to a variance uh, to, to a reference metric, then the y noise is just equal to e to the minus phi of the y noise with respect to the reference metric. So here I'm just adding this uh, Kasi G, but you can also write this E to the minus phi Kasi of the reference metric. For area form, it's just adding this uh, noise times the area form in the same way like, the, like here for the metric. <clears throat> okay, by the way, may, maybe I need to mention that, you know, if, uh, if sigma, the strength is converging to zero, sending to zero, right? Then this just yield the, the classical Ricci flow, obviously. And uh, now, if you formally, right, formally rescale the, the the field in this way, and then send the sigma to zero, then formally this would yield the linear stochastic heat equation. So this equation is just completely well understood in the in the in the stochastic PDE community. <clears throat> So the, so the solution is Gaussian. So this is kind of similar with, uh, with uh, Vincent's talk uh, maybe two weeks ago about a semi-classical limit, but you know, kind of formulating the dynamical setting. I'll, I'll mention this later. <clears throat> okay, and uh, we also expect that uh, the Liouville quantum field theory should be invariant measure because in general, right, in finite dimension, right, uh, suppose this was finite dimension, then then you, you take a gradient below a certain potential uh, plus a y noise, then this should be, then, then you know, the exponential of the, the potential should be the uh, invariant measure. For instance, you can check this using Komogorov equation, right? Um, so we, we also expect this to be true in, in infinite dimension. <clears throat> and we're going to prove that. <clears throat> now, how are we going to make sense of this equation, these formal equations? We're going to give a meaning to the equation of area form, right? So if you think of the Liouville quantum, Liouville, uh, quantum gravity as a, <coughs> as a theory of random area forms, right? Then we're going to define a Markov process in the space of area forms. <coughs> so what I'm going to do is uh, I'll just take the simplest case, the, the torus case. Because then the so if you take the torus with flat metric, uh, then the the curvature of the reference metric is zero. So you can you can ignore this term so make make the equation a little bit simpler. Uh, now again our equation has the for the area form has three terms this kind of Laplacian term, a lambda term, and the noise term. <clears throat> So our goal is to define a Markov process for this area form A, right? Um, whose one dimensional projection satisfy very concrete and uh, well-defined SD, one dimensional SD. <clears throat> it's based on the following observation, right? So if you, no, if you use the area form, on both sides of the equation, use the area form to integrate the test function f. And I'm going to call this a of f, which is just a scalar, right? There's a number. And then do this on both sides, then um, <clears throat> we're going to get the following SD. So the time derivative af is equal to this the reference area integrating this uh, f times Laplacian phi. And, uh, and this is something times the Brownian motion. You can see the last term by calculating the quadratic variation of this. 
right? So if you test this, you know, the, if you multiply this by test function s, and the, since a is like e to the two phi times a naught, then with this you you're, you're left with e to the phi. So it's like uh, the Euclidean y noise times e to the phi times f. Then the then the variance of that is just uh, um, is just the f square times e to two phi, but e to two phi is just the area form. Okay. So so the 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 variance of the quadratic variation of this is essentially area form f square uh, times t. So this Brown motion. So this is just one dimensional Brown motion, which uh, which of course depends on your your test function s. <clears throat> So we are going to define a process of area forms um, so that for any test function f, the kind of one dimensional projection is given by this SDE. So this SDE is completely well defined. Okay. <clears throat> but there are still two questions here. The first question is what's the state space for the area form? The second question is there's still this knowing kind of phi, right? So, so how do we deal with this phi, right? So maybe you want to rewrite the phi in terms of a or something. Um, so first, the state space is uh, we choose the state state space to be um, basically Borel measures, right? So area form is a is a you know, positive Borel measure. Um, what's nice is uh, this space is kind of locally compact. Uh, which is for some reason nice to use the uh, directly form later. And uh, <clears throat> um, to to answer the question about the phi, now we use to, we, we need to use uh, these two results, which says essentially there is a measurable bijection between Gaussian free field and the uh, Gaussian multiplicative chaos. So these two fields, you know, there is a map with the GMC map, which gives you this uh, GMC. And then you can also, so they prove that you can also invert this map. Right? And just the inversion is also uh, measurable. So this allow us to go back and forth between Gaussian free field and the GMC. In other words, the conformal factor and the area form. Okay, so the phi here, will be just understood as the, the inverse GMC map of the area form. So in some sense, this phi also depends on area form, right? Okay. <clears throat> By the way, maybe you, you, you like a gamma here, but my, okay, here my, my, uh, the variance of the phi depends on some other parameter. So there is really a kind of parameter hidden here. Um, so the main theorem we, we can prove is, uh, is the following. Um, suppose we are in the in the so-called L1 regime of the GMC. <clears throat> so in our geometry notation, it's like sigma smaller than two squared pi. It corresponds to if you use the gamma notation like the probabilist, then the gamma should be less than two. Then um, there exists a Markov diffusion process um, on this uh, state space of Borel measures, well, such that for any smooth test function, the integral of you know the test function against area form satisfied above one dimensional SDE. So here, <clears throat> this is a kind of a weak solution to this equation because. You know, why I say there exists such a process to solve the equation in the following sense, right? Um, what I mean is there exists the probability space and the filtration and, and so on, such that there is a process on this probability space, right? So this is the, this means I, I need, you know, the probability space is also part of my solution, so this is a really weak solution. Um, <clears throat> Okay, maybe I can stop, I can pause here to, if there is any question. Uh, so can I, 
ask about this uh, Laplacian uh, phi p. So, yeah. um, so first of this inverse map, and then you take Laplacian on it. Uh, so uh, what does it, uh, this mean? Are you, do you mean you have uh, testing some uh, test function when you do uh, integration by uh, parts? Or just directly take this uh, yeah. distribution of uh, Laplacian to this phi t? Yeah, yeah. So this Laplacian is a distribution, but my f is a smooth function. So, so f uh, times this uh, distribution is, uh, uh, is something smooth. Okay. So, yeah, so this is the smooth thing. So th th yeah, that's the point why we choose a, a smooth test function f, which uh, makes everything nice. Um, all right, so we are going to, yeah, so the rest of the talk, we are going to use a directly form theory to prove the theorem. Uh, sorry, how, yes. how can I ask a question more general about the gradient flow, stochastic gradient flow? Yes. Um, so what is the role played by the metric that you, I know you define, to define the gradient flow, you need to have the metric. Is that big, then the invariant measure, this expression you give, it has to, with respect to the volume form with, given by the metric? The, yeah, so the, the stochastic dynamic certainly depends on the metric. Yeah. If you take, if you don't take the, if you didn't take the Calabi metric, you take some other metric, then the stochastic dynamic would be different. Yeah, right. Mm -hmm. And then you write that the, the invariant measure has that expression exponential of the Right, right. Uh, and that is with respect to oh, the volume yeah. so, form. So that's a good question, right? So this measure, well, first of all, this measure has nothing to do with the metric because uh, mm -hmm. this, uh, this function, well, this, this uh, Liouville action is just a function on that infinite dimensional thing, right? Mm -hmm. uh, at, this, at this moment, there has nothing to do with the, with the metric, with the Calabi metric. But then uh, when, you, when you look for the dynamic, right? So dynamic is like a gradient flow plus a noise. Now mm -hmm. there are two things in the dynamic, the gradient and the noise. So the gradient and the noise should be both with respect to the same metric on the infinite dimensional space. So if, you, mm -hmm. if your gradient, the notion of gradient depends on the Calabi metric, then the noise should be also with respect to the, the same. So here you see the, here mm -hmm. essentially you're taking the Calabi metric, right? So when you take the L2 between F and the C, it's against this, uh, this uh, area form. Mm -hmm. So, okay, so, so the gradient and the, the Y noise should be with back to the same metric. Mm -hmm. Only in that case, the, 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 the measure is invariant. It is expected to be invariant. But this is a density with respect to what? Oh, this is just the, okay, this is just the uh, measure defined by, you know, Lacan, Kupian, and Remy, and, and so on, and Vincent, right? So this is, Okay. okay. The reference metric, is, the, the the reference measure measure is the is the is the Gaussian free field, right? Because this uh, will has uh, this Gaussian part plus this uh, GMC part. So so this measure is just uh, complete well defined and until now, right? So there's a Gaussian free field with the density given by the GMC. Thank you. Um. Right. Okay. So so actually. If you look at this uh, this SD again, it's kind of coupled because uh, a and a of f depends on like a of f square, right? Which is another kind of one-dimensional projection. But one special case is uh, actually f equal to one. If f equal to one, then integral of one is just the total area of this surface. So a of, a of one is a is the is the total area, and now one times the Laplacian, and then you you just integrate the Laplacian, right? Since this is a closed surface, then this is zero, and uh, and then this is just a of one. So what you get is actually a very nice aut um, autonomous SDE for the total area. 
it says the time derivative total area is equal to the square root of total area d Brown motion minus the or well, the drift is total area. Okay, so this is very simple SDE. And uh, well, it's some sort of a continuous state branching process, but um, if you ignore the lambda term, then this is just the square Bessel process of dimension zero. So recall that, you know, maybe we all know this from stochastic calculus course, right? So the so-called sto the so square Bessel process dimension n is, uh, is this SDE, right? dx equal to square root of x dB plus n dt. So here, um, the n, we, we don't have like a, like a simple, like, like we don't have a dt term. So like n is equal to zero, right? And uh, um, well, the square Bessel is just essentially the, you take the n-dimensional Brownian motion, and then you look at the Brownian mo the distance of Brownian motion from the origin. Right? So if n is equal to one, then it hits the origin, and uh, and infinite many times, right? And uh, if n is uh, two or larger, then uh, it never hits the origin. And, uh, and actually, you can you can then once you have this SDE, you can take n to be any real number. And uh, if n is equal to zero here, then the total area. Um, is going to be uh, almost surely uh, observed at zero in finite time. So, so this dynamic is actually such that the for the torus, right? For the torus, the the uh, uh, total area is going to to collapse in some sense uh, in finite time. Um, this is essentially because the Liouville quantum field theory on the torus is not a normalized, it's not a probability measure before you insert the vertex operators. So when I say it's an environment measure, I should say actually it's infinitesimally environment or symmetrizing measure. Okay, so that means while well, the generator acting on that is equal to zero, but for a long time it's not really environment, it's just an infinitesimally environment. Okay. Um, so, so maybe I'd briefly tell you the idea of, uh, of a directly form using, using a just completely naive example. So just, <laughs> this is just the one dimensional. Okay, so forget about the Ricci and so on. This is just one dimensional SDE. Okay, how do we apply the directly form? So this SDE has an environment measure like e to the v. Um, the drift is a derivative of the V. <clears throat> we can do a simple calculation. Uh, so the integral of uh, derivative F, derivative G, uh, integrate against this measure. You can do an integration by part of it, put this derivative on the other factors. Then you have a Laplacian G, and then you have a, like a derivative of this, so like a V derivative. And uh, turns out that this guy is just the generator of this SDE, right? So we get a generator here. So the Dirichlet form says, okay, suppose you don't know this, okay? Suppose you, you never learn, you know, like Eto calculus. How do you, how do you use the Dirichlet form to, gener to, 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 to generate a stochastic process such that this is the environment measure? Okay, first we define directly form. So for any two functions, f and g, so now again, everything is just one dimensional, just this is just a simple example, right? So directly form of f and g is just defined as the scalar product df dg. Um, now nu is the, the measure. Directly form theory tells us two things. The first thing is, once you have this kind of bilinear form, then there exists a Markov process that is associated with this bilinear form. Okay, you can take this as a black box. Um, it just somehow using some functional analysis, there is just a, such a diffusion. Okay, what I mean by the diffusion associated with this directly form. It means 
the generator L of this diffusion satisfy this relation, just like the, the relation you see here. And, uh, and at this moment, we only know there is a such a diffusion. We don't know in what sense is that it, what sense is solve this SDE, right? So, so the second piece of the theory tells us there is a semi-Martingale decomposition. For any function of the diffusion, there is a decomposition into a Martingale part and a drift part. The quadratic variation of the Martingale is given by this sort of derivative form, and the, the drift is just given by the, the generator. So, so now we can use this to identify this diffusion as a solution to this SDE. Because if you take the function to be just identity function, then um, the directly form, right? So then, then we, can, we can identify, okay, we have this uh, uh, semi-Martingale decomposition for, for this process. And now we only need to identify the Martingale to be the Brownian motion and the drift to be the, the right drift, right? So since we take G to be just X, the directly form is like DG is just one. So we have an integral of DF against the new. The most important step here is the integration by parts formula for the new, which says under the integral against new, the derivative of a function is the same as multiplying the function by the derivative of the potential. So like if the potential is, is this Gaussian measure and potential is a, is, a, is a square, then this is like F times the X, right? So then would be the usual integration by part for Gaussians. And uh, once we know once we know this, <clears throat> if you compare with, with this fact, right? Then we see that the LG is just this V derivative here. So the generator is indeed the derivative V, which explains the, you know, the drift is indeed this derivative V, right? And now for the martingale, well, G is just X, so DJ DJ is like one, one. So the quadratic variation is T by the V, the martingale is Brownian motion. Okay, so that's how I, I identify the diffusion to be the solution to that. So the most, again, the most important step is the integration by parts for this environment measure. And the, okay, so basically we can prove such a integration by parts formula for the, for the, uh, for the Liouville quantum, uh, quantum, quantum field theory, right? So now the Liouville quantum field theory is a measure nu, which is the Gaussian free field times the density, just as Elin asked. Um, so you can first prove an integration by parts for the Gaussian free field. And then based on that, prove a integration by parts for the, for the, for the nu, because you can, you know, take the density as part of the test function and then apply the Gaussian integration by part and so on. So basically the output is uh, under this integral against the new, um, multiplying a function by this kind of a quadratic thing is the same as taking derivative on that function and then multiply this function by the GMC. So this M is a GMC for the phi. Okay, um, so I'll skip the details. Basically, we can prove this integration by part. And then we can use the kind of similar strategy as I explained in the, in the one dimension example to, to identify that, you know, first of all, we have a directly form. And then by the, by the theory, it generates a diffusion. And then we can identify the the martingale part and the drift part of the diffusion and see that indeed the one, you know, indeed you have the right one dimensional projection. <clears throat> um, this is the torus case. We can also 
uh, generalize it to arbitrary uh, surface where the kind of one dimensional projection that has some this Laplacian term and this Browning term. Um, but then we have the curvature term, right? Because the you know the under the reference metric is not a flat metric anymore. And uh, now this term comes with this uh, this coefficient q, and uh, the q should be taken as the, you know, the quantum value, like gamma over two plus two over gamma. Um, can also generalize to to this to uh, to the situation with marked points, where the the equation for the area form the same thing, but but now plus these uh, these uh, direct distributions, where x are the marked points and alpha other 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 ways. So a very interesting thing is if you look at the total area with uh, with these uh, marked points, then the total area satisfies the following SDE, right? So again, you have like a square root of total area dB, and then this total area with a new drift, which depends on the weights of the marked points, the, the Q guy, and the Euler characteristic. So this is now the square Bessel process of dimension being this number. So, so you know, it's standard in stochastic calculus that you know, once a Bessel process, then you know that if this number is uh, larger than two, then the total area process does not hit zero. If it's between zero and two, the total area hits zero, but it can be continued. If it's negative, then total area is absorbed. The surface is going to collapse in finite time. And actually, this this uh, threshold is consistent with the cyborg bound that your right your measure after the insertion um, is normalizable. So the integral of the, the correlation is finite. So that's the cyborg bound, right? So um, it, so our condition here is the same. Uh, okay, I don't know. Maybe I have a three minutes or something that I can. I can point. I can maybe discuss some possible directions. Uh, sorry. Okay. Fine. Okay. Um, so we only constructed this uh, dynamic for the area form. One can ask, you know, how to construct the dynamic for the conformal factor, or even have a have a couple dynamic, right? Um, such that for any positive time t. Phi is the Gaussian free field for A, and A is the GMC for Phi. So that's one thing to do. Another thing is uh, now in the state space area forms, right? So, so the state space are just the Borel measures, and we just take the, the weak topology, right? The weak convergence of measures as a topology of the state space. Um, so can we actually take stronger topology? So in this work, Olivier Brown emotion, uh, they have uh, some sort of uh, you know best of holder uh, norm uh, regularity. Uh, uh, so how to construct strong solutions? You know, the regular structure theory or uh, or parallel control theory um, for singular SPD don't seem to work here because uh, somehow the SPD is critical, uh, and and all those theories uh, I think only apply to subcritical case. Um, but maybe you can do some sort of dimensional regularization, right? So the the stochastic equation look like this, where this Lap this Laplacian is the Laplacian of the metric G, right? But you can maybe regularize the noise a little bit by you know, applying a small negative power of the Laplacian or something like that, which uh, makes the question essentially like two minus epsilon dimension. Then the, you know, regular structure and those kind of theories would apply, I think. Um, or you can maybe, you know, perturb the, the, the equation in the noise, right? So. If you don't, if you turn off the noise, then just the classical Ricci flow, 
and then you just write a solution as a, as a series or something that would be close to this uh, perturbative uh, approach to, to Liouville quantum gravity. Um, yeah, let me mention that Gabin has a strong solution to this equation where this is just a linear Laplacian. So this equation comes from, well, if, if instead of taking the Calabi metric, you just take the kind of trivial metric on the, on the conformal class um, and then take the gradient flow of that, basically get this equation. So, so, so he, can, uh, he can obtain strong solution to this using a uh, regular structure. Is there any connection, right? Can you, I don't know, can you do some sort of interpolation between the two equations or something like that, or interpolation between the two metrics? I don't know. Um, so I think the most interesting question is the scaling limit of, uh, of a certain discrete dynamic. Uh, for instance, some sort of discrete version of a uh, Brownian map, and I, I'm, I'm not an expert on that, but it, maybe you define some sort of a dynamic on the discrete model and try to prove scaling limit. Um, also mentioned in the beginning of the talk, maybe you can try to couple the matter field with, uh, with this Ricci flow. Now the Ricci flow is kind of completely like pure gravity in some sense without a matter. Um, there's a recent work um, uh, by Lacan, Rose, and Valga. They couple with this uh, Mabuchi key energy. In principle, maybe you can also define dynamic, like stochastic version of that. And uh, also, you know, uh, the talk two weeks ago by Vincent semi-classical limit. So maybe we can also do this semi-classical limit um, on the level of the stochastic PD, on the level of the dynamic. Um, so, so I guess the audience has more questions. I, I just stop here and thank you for the attention. Okay, uh, thank you very much, Tom.